idea of adverse impact was first mentioned in 1966, right after the passage of the Civil Rights Act. And since that time, the concept of adverse impact has been refined, and it's really widely understood. But employers are still faced with hundreds of disparate impact lawsuits every year. And I think the reason for this is twofold. First, employers have traditionally approached discrimination prevention through training. We spend almost $300 million a year and countless hours in seminars talking about conflict resolution and communication skills, the importance of having a diverse and inclusive workplace, and so forth. And the thing about adverse impact is that it resides in the policies and practices of the organization. It's not about intentional discrimination, and it doesn't happen through personal interaction. So the time and money we spend on anti-discrimination training helps to reduce intentional discrimination, but the training doesn't really address the issues of adverse impact. Conventional training just doesn't work when it comes to adverse impact. The other reason that adverse impact is still a problem, I think, is that it hides. It lives in the organization's policies and practices, and it's not always obvious that it's there. Employers may not even know that one of their policies or practices is having an adverse impact until it's too late and they're faced with a lawsuit. You really can't manage the risk of adverse impact using traditional strategies. You need a new approach built on proactive quantitative analysis. I've been working with businesses and law firms for almost 12 years now. And part of my role as a consultant is to educate my clients. To me, it's about more than just running the statistical tests and writing up the results. I think it's really important that my clients understand the analyses that I've done and what the implications of those analyses are. And I think clients really want to understand what's going on. I've never had a client say, you know, thanks for the analysis and the report, but we don't want an explanation of what you did, why you did it that way, or what it means. I think they really do want to understand it. And I wrote this book for my clients, and people like my clients, human resource professionals, compliance officers, and legal counsel. I wanted to introduce them to statistical analysis of adverse impact in a non-technical way. So, for example, in the book, when we talk about probability theory, we do it in terms of flipping a coin. I like to use a lot of concrete examples. In the chapter on hiring, for instance, I use real-life examples of hiring analysis. In the chapter on reduction in force, we use real-life examples of reduction in force. With this book, I really wanted to stay away from abstract presentations and really focus on walking readers through real-life examples that they're likely to see in their everyday business lives. Well, the book won't make you a statistical expert. What it will do is give you a better understanding of the information your statistical expert is providing. If you understand that information, you're better able to correct any problems that you may have. And you'll also be in a better position to proactively look at your policies and practices to avoid adverse impact problems in the future.